Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you've been enjoying the lovely weather we've been having this week. Um, I'm here for our next assembly, which is this week, chapter four of Pass the Mimble Web Saves the World. Last week, if you remember, the chapter that we read together was all about friendships. And I talked to you about how we have lots of amazing friendships in our school community. And I challenged you to see whether you could reach out to someone that perhaps you haven't spoken to, either a family member or a friend, and catch up with them and see how they are. I wondered if any of you managed to do that this week. If you did, I hope you enjoyed speaking to that person. This week's chapter is all about feeling motivated. Having motivation and being motivated means that you've got the enthusiasm to do something um, and a reason for it. So for example, if you want to be really, really good at something, you would need to have the motivation to practice over and over again because you know you want to be really, really successful at it. For some of you, that might be a sport, it could be a game, it could be a craft, it could be a subject at school. I know lots of your teachers have been sharing things that they've been trying to get good at and have motivation to do in the weekly newsletters that they've been sending you. So I hope you've seen some of those. Um, and I've actually been motivated to do something myself during lockdown. I've actually learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Um, I was motivated to do it because I've never done it before. and I've always wanted to learn um, and I had to practice a lot so I could get to the point where I was able to solve it. So it looks like this. So that's something that I've been motivated to do over the last few weeks. I wonder if you've done anything like that. So this chapter is all about motivation and how we can keep motivated, but it's also got lots of numbers in it. Lots of numbers and lots of talk about maths. And because I love maths, I think that this might be my favorite chapter so far. So here we go. This is chapter four of Parsley Mimblewood, all about motivation. Let me get the book up to share. Here we go. Chapter four, how to teach yourself to teach yourself better than a teacher could teach yourself. Tuesday, the 31st of March, 2020. Today, I've been thinking about the number two. That sounds kind of babyish, doesn't it? Let me put it another way. Today, I've been investigating the properties of the number commonly referred to as two. It all started when I was feeding my animals. Dogs have two eyes and two ears. Goats have two horns. Even Bo has two arms and two legs and two kind of snotty nostrils. And that got me thinking about all the twos that animals have. Birds have two wings and two feet. Dolphins have two flippers. Crabs have two claws. And Stichosaurus, the stick insect, has two antennae. But some things don't come in twos. Dogs have four legs, beetles have six legs, octopuses have eight tentacles, and centipedes have a hundred legs. Millipedes have a thousand legs. Some ladybirds have six spots, and some have eight spots. Bo has ten fingers and ten toes. Then I started looking at the plants in my garden. The daffodils had five petals. One of the daisies I looked at had 35 petals and another one had 42 petals. The dandelions all had different numbers of leaves. I tried counting the branches on the tree, but I got confused about what counts as a branch and what's just a part of another branch. At lunch, I counted 13 seeds in my apple, and then I counted the seeds in Bo's apple to make sure. He only had 10 seeds. Have you noticed the pattern? Animals have even numbers of body parts, but plants can have odd or even. The only exception is the number one. Monkeys only have one tail and you've got, and you've only got one head, I hope. I decided to do some research on the enchanted tablet. It turns out that almost all animals are bilaterally symmetrical. That means you could cut them in half down the middle and they'd have the same number of legs fingers, tentacles, snotty nostrils on either side. But plants are mostly 
radially symmetrical, which means you can spin them around and around and they still look pretty much the same. Imagine a spinning, spinning a daisy flower around, around and around. So plants could have odd or even numbers of petals, leaves, branches and seeds. I was very pleased with my discovery, so I went to go and tell Bo, but he wasn't very interested in the number of parts that animal, animals and plants have. When he grows up, he wants to be a space paleontologist. He plans to go to the moon and dig up dinosaur bones. He plans to go to the moon and dig up dinosaur bones. I've tried explaining that there aren't any dinosaur bones on the moon, but mum says it's okay because it keeps him busy learning lots of things about dinosaurs and lots of things about space. Yesterday, he told me the biggest planet in our solar sister is stupider which I thought was quite a mean thing to say until I realised that what he meant was the biggest planet in our solar system is Jupiter. Today, he was focusing really hard on learning how to spell pterodactyl, which is pretty ambitious because sometimes he struggles to spell bow. Mum says that if you don't go to school, then you need to have a motivation. At school, you have teachers prowling around, making sure you're doing your work and hitting you with canes or locking you in the trochee if you don't follow the rules. Do they still do that? I read Matilda and Danny Champion of the World and that sort of thing happened all the time in their schools. My motivation is curiosity and finding things out. Bose is dreaming of being a space paleontologist. Mum's motivation is that she loves to master learning how to do things. One week last winter, she spent every night practicing juggling with oranges, and now she can juggle any fruit she likes, even pineapples. Another time, she decided she wanted to learn calligraphy, the really fancy curly writing. So she spent ages practicing, and now her writing is so curly that no one can read it. Mum was more impressed that Bo. Mum was more impressed than Bo by my discovery about symmetry in animals and plants, especially because we'd only learned about different types of symmetry a couple of weeks ago. Then she got out the B bomb. That stands for the Big Book of Maths. It's an absolutely enormous maths book, and we call it B bomb because that's the sound it makes when you drop it on the kitchen table. I sort of wish I could just spend all my time investigating things, but it's kind of useful learning stuff from Bebom. Like last week, we learned about different types of symmetry, and that was helpful in my animal and plant parts discovery today. After maths, I did some writing, this book, and mum told me to write down some more questions about motivation and learning things at home. So here they are. What's your motivation? Are there any other types of motivation? Should you only have one motivation or can you have different ones? What else do you need to help you learn at home? And there is the end of chapter four. And I think you'll probably agree that there's actually a lot of similar things that Parsley is having to do to motivate herself by learning from home all the time that you're having to do quite now, that you're having to do right now. Um, have a think about what keeps you motivated at home because having to do home learning is something really that lots of us never ever had to experience before, apart from perhaps your homework on your homework men menus. And actually some of you could be finding it quite tricky to be motivated to sit down and do it. So you just need to have a think about how you could motivate yourself. If you're already doing that, then you're obviously already doing a fantastic job. But perhaps something that could motivate you is having a think about what doing the home learning will mean that you can do when you're older and what, it, what jobs it will allow you to get. So next week is half term, which means no assembly next week, but I'll be back the week after with chapter five. I hope you all have a lovely half term and have a rest from all of that fantastic home learning that I've been seeing you send in to your teachers. Have a really, really lovely break. Enjoy the weather and stay safe and see you all very soon. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>